Moles are the hidden architects of the animal kingdom. Living beneath the surface, they operate in complete secrecy. But something strange is going on in their underground world, a mystery that goes far beyond what meets the eye. Many animals we know as moles aren't really moles at all. Some are related to hedgehogs, others to elephants and even kangaroos. Evolving on separate paths, they ended up becoming identical. So why do animals keep evolving into moles? To find out, we first need to take a look at what makes a mole unique. And one of their most important adaptations isn't something we can see, but is nonetheless crucial. Living underground in tunnels, carbon dioxide can quickly build up. So in response, moles have evolved to tolerate lower levels of oxygen than pretty much any other mammal. They can do this because their blood contains a specialized form of hemoglobin, the substance that carries oxygen around the body. This form of hemoglobin is designed to bind to oxygen much more easily. Combined with their ability to reuse exhaled air, it allows them to thrive underground. Though it would be useless if it couldn't actually get on the ground in the first place. The mole's most well known trait is its extraordinary digging capability. Such speeds are powered by an extra thumb on each paw, specifically engineered to increase the surface area. This extra surface area allows moles to tunnel much more efficiently and in turn find more food. And since moles often need to crawl backwards and forwards, their coat is designed to not point in one direction. Contrary to popular belief, moles don't dig to find food. They dig so food finds them. Their tunnels effectively serve as traps for worms to accidentally fall into. The mole's greatest secret would surprise many people. They are venomous. Though not dangerous to humans, their venom paralyzes earthworms, allowing them to store, in some cases, up to a thousand worms for future use. So now that you know what makes a mole a mole, it's time to take a look at their evolution. True moles belong to the Talpidae and can be found across Europe, North America, and Asia. This family was previously classified within the Insectivora along with animals like elephant shrews and colligoos. Now it is known they actually belong to the Eulipotifla, which also contains the shrews and hedgehogs. This order is further nestled within the Laurasiotheria, one of the six major clades of mammals, all of which except for the monotremes have evolved into mole-like forms. Even within the mole family, there are many kinds of animals you wouldn't recognize as moles. The desmans and shrew moles, despite their different adaptations, are technically still moles. So now you know about the true moles, it's time to take a look at the first example of an unrelated animal evolving into a mole. The most impressive example are perhaps the golden moles of Africa. Belonging to the Afrotheria, they diverged from the ancestors of true moles over a hundred million years ago. Within Afrotheria, their closest relatives are the Otter Shrews and Tenrax. Although they are by no means recent relatives, all having diverged from each other some 45 million years ago, long before Africa collided into Eurasia, giving the lineages of mammals already present an opportunity to fill ecological niches. And one of those left unfilled was that of the mole. The golden mole's ancestor slowly began to develop traits similar to the moles of Eurasia. Developing powerful hands for digging, dense fur, toughened skin, a short head, and many other mole-like features. Compared to Talpit, however, many golden moles are, well, golden, helping them to stay camouflaged in sandy soils. They also differ in how they detect food. The Talpid moles rely on their eyes organs, whilst the golden moles are thought to be extra sensitive to low frequency sounds. The digging adaptations of golden moles are less extreme, however. They don't have sharp claws on their back feet like talpids, instead those of golden moles are webbed. This adaptation is necessary for the environments they inhabit as they often find themselves having to shovel away loose soil. One incredible ability golden moles have that their talpid cousins don't have however, 
is their ability to enter torpor. Torpor, if you didn't know, is a state where an animal decreases its metabolic rate and temperature. This means they don't waste as much energy in conditions where food is scarce. In the case of golden moles, this can be extreme cold or heat, common in the desert. Some golden moles are so advanced that they don't even need water to survive. And although I've been saying they evolved into moles, it's kind of the other way around. Golden moles predate halberd moles by millions of years. In case you didn't already know, this phenomenon is known as convergent evolution and is found in pretty much any animal you can think of. Whether the tales of dugongs and whales, pronghorn and antelope, thylacines and wolves, tenrex and hedgehogs, and the list goes on. Convergent evolution is quite simple really, as if two environments are similar but separated, why wouldn't they develop the same traits? With moles being one of the finest examples. Despite being able to tolerate a wide variety of environments, golden moles have an incredibly fragmented distribution, with most species concentrated along the southern coast, meaning that many species are endangered and one even once feared extinct. As just last year, the Winton's Golden Mole was rediscovered in South Africa, with its secretive nature allowing it to remain undetected since 1937. Far away from Africa in Australia, we find another example of a mole-like creature, convergently evolving to such a degree that you'd be forgiven for thinking that they were golden moles. The marsupial moles. As made obvious by their name, the marsupial moles are even more distant to the talpids and golden moles, with a divergence taking place an estimated 160 million years ago. Found only in remote corners of the Australian interior, they are by far the least understood and rarest of the creatures we'll cover today. Comprising two species, they were discovered over a hundred years after the golden moles. As you can probably guess by now, they fill Australia's niche of small burrowing mammal. Compared to their cousins, they have one feature that greatly sets them apart, a pouch. Although it's not like the pouch of any other marsupial, as it's specifically designed to face backwards as to not fill with sand. Fossils of these animals are even rarer than the creatures themselves, and have so far only been found at a single site from the Miocene, although by then they were already suited for a life underground. This patchy fossil record makes it hard to pinpoint their position on the tree of life. The evidence we do have suggests they are related to the bandicoots and marsupial carnivores. Beyond living species, several examples of more convergent evolution appear throughout the fossil record. The most impressive of which are the Apoikotheriidae, meaning strange beasts. These animals belong to the Paleonodonta, making them relatives of pangolins, which I covered in my last video. Spanning across the northern hemisphere, they live from the Paleocene to the Oligocene. Their skeletons show a short flat head, specialized snouts, and eyes suited for burrowing underground. The reason for their extinction is unknown, but one of the leading leading theories is that the talpid moles outcompeted them. Moving on to rodents, we find far less extreme adaptations to underground life, and out of the rodents, none are as specialized as the naked mole rat, who despite spending its entire life underground, shares little in common with moles. But they do share one adaptation, the ability to tolerate low oxygen environments. In fact, naked mole rats outperform moles in this regard, as they are able to survive for 18 minutes without oxygen. They are also pretty much blind and have a low metabolic rate. And whilst the similarities can be cool, the differences are much more interesting. And the most incredible is that they are the only mammal alive today that is unable to control its body temperature, making them essentially cold-blooded, meaning they have to rely on the ambient temperature to stay warm. They are also one of only two eusocial mammals, can't feel pain or get cancer, and live up to 37 years. The main force behind why these animals evolve so differently is because naked mole rats are herbivores. They depend on large tubers found with their tunnels, 
which requires immense teamwork, in turn resulting in all their differences. This leaves all but two of the major clades of mammals without mole-like adaptations, though one of the Xenatherans seems to be on its way there. Within the armadillos, one branch stands out from the rest, the fairy armadillos. By far the most distinct armadillos alive today, they stand out for their small eyes, white fur, and flexible pink shell. Their claws, reminiscent of aardvarks, mean they can bury themselves in seconds, easily avoiding predators. Due to their secrecy and rarity, so little is known of these animals, though one thing we know for sure is that they are by far the smallest armadillos, with the pink fairy armadillo reaching just 10 centimeters in length. And just like how armadillos from the New World developed armor, an old world creature, the pangolin, developed its own protection. If you want to find out about how genius its adaptations really are, you're going to want to watch this video.